In today's video, we're going to be talking about legumes, that's beans and lentils. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to cook these wonderful foods at home so you never buy store-bought again. Lentils are often called the meat of the plant-based food world, and that's because they tend to be the main source of protein that people consume. But they offer two nutrients that meat doesn't, fiber and folate, and they're all wonderful sources of these two essential nutrients. Today I'm going to show you a wide variety of different beans and lentils. And just so you know, the term legume, which they're often collectively referred to as, means anything that's grown inside a pod. So. Let's get looking at this rainbow of lovely legumes. Um, over here we have red lentils. Uh, these are really uh, typically often sold split and therefore they're really nice in soups because they tend to sort of melt down and get really, really creamy. Um, so these would not be appropriate for something like a salad where these lentils, which are called black lentils or beluga lentils because they tend to resemble beluga caviar once they're cooked, um, these are perfect for a salad because they tend to retain their shape and a little bit of tooth and bite. Um, so they're really nice in the best lentil salad ever, which is uh, in my cookbook and on my website. It's really the best lentil salad ever. These are green lentils. Um, these are widely available, really inexpensive. They're about the same size as the black lentil, um, but they tend to be a little bit softer. They're a really nice thing to cook along with another grain like brown rice in the same pot. And in next week's videos, I'm gonna actually going to show you how to do that. We have um, mung beans here. Mung beans are fantastic and they're kind of like a lentil bean hybrid in that you don't need to soak them before you cook them, but I always recommend soaking first. Um, and if you've ever had bean sprouts from the grocery store, just the ubiquitous ones that are labeled as such, it's actually from a mung bean. Split peas are another really classic soup ingredient, um, and they're, but they also are really delicious in dips, as a matter of fact. So you can boil them much like you'd uh, cook up chickpeas and then puree them in the food processor. That's really delicious. We also have black beans. These are fantastic in uh, Mexican dishes, but I also just really like adding them to salads and they make amazing chocolate cookies, believe it or not. That recipe is also on my blog. So yummy. Chickpeas, these are the classic hummus ingredient, um, but I also really like these in salads uh, and along with roasted vegetables, really delicious. If you go to a health food store, you will see a whole world of different beans and lentils. Uh, we found these um, at a local health food store. These are Christmas lima beans and they're called so because they're sort of red and white speckled. They're really beautiful. I think the exciting thing about legumes is that there are so many different varieties and they all sort of serve a different function and they're also versatile at the same time. So I highly encourage you to go to your local food store and check out the selection they have because when you buy in cans, you actually can't get the wide variety that are available dried. And on that note, I will say that if you wanna save money with beans and lentils, definitely buy in bulk. Just like with whole grains, choose a store with a high turnover and this will ensure freshness and it will also help you save so much money in the long run. Because when you buy cans, you really only get about a cup and a half out of each can, but the same money you can spend on a can of beans, which is maybe two to three dollars, you can buy you know, a week's worth or you know, a couple weeks worth of beans, which is fantastic. So there's a real cost savings. And on top of that, you're not using a can. So there's a huge uh, savings to the environment as well, which is fantastic. So today I'm gonna show you how to cook legumes, beans and lentils. Like I mentioned before, you don't need to soak lentils before you cook them, but I always recommend doing so, and here's why. So beans and lentils, just like grains, contain a compound called phytic acid, and this naturally occurring compound inhibits the absorption of minerals while we're digesting them. Especially if you're investing in organic legumes, you're getting a lot more minerals in the actual product, but if you can't absorb those minerals, then all that money's sort of going to waste. So it's a really good idea to soak the lentils first. Beans, on the other hand, are essential to soak overnight. They need eight to 12 hours, and I always recommend putting a little acidic medium in the water, and this is to further help break down that phytic acid and improve their digestibility. Which brings me to my next topic. 
Um, a lot of people tell me when they eat beans they have a lot of gas. And that's because typically people are eating canned beans and they're not cooked properly. When you soak beans overnight, you're actually really helping break down that phytic acid and all of those compounds that are hard to digest. Another easy way to reduce the gas forming properties in legumes when you cook them is by using something called kombu. Kombu is a sea vegetable or seaweed that's found commonly at any health food store. You just need an inch or two about a size this big for any pot of legumes and that's really going to help break down those difficult to digest compounds so you're not going to get as much gas, which is great. I'm going to make some black beans for you today. Soak the beans yourself, give them a really good rinse. Let's get cooking and show you just how simple cooking them is. So I'm just going to make sure that the beans have come to a boil. They definitely have, which is great. And sometimes Depending on the bean, you're going to get a little bit of foam or sort of like some sludge actually that comes to the top. This is totally normal. But again, if you want to reduce the gas producing properties, it's a good idea to skim that off the top. So I just take a spoon and if I have the lid handy, I'll just put it right inside the lid and then discard that into the sink. But other than that, it doesn't need any stirring. You can just keep the lid on. But the most important thing is that you reduce the heat to simmer because we just want a low heat on the pot. We're just gonna cook this for, you know, usually 45 to 50 minutes, depending on the bean. Sometimes a bit longer, sometimes a bit shorter, but that's sort of our ballpark. And again, like grains, you don't need to stir the pot, you don't need to do anything during the cooking process, but let the beans do their thing. Like I mentioned earlier, kombu will really help reduce those gas producing properties, and now is the perfect time to add them to the pot. Again, this is not 100% necessary, but if you personally have issues with beans and lentils, then this is great. So I just put about a two inch piece into the pot, put the lid back on, and that's it. You will know your beans are cooked when they are nice and tender. Again, the time that you need to cook the beans for will vary um, accordingly, um, but as a general rule, lentils take about 15 to 20 minutes, and beans take anywhere from 45 to 60 minutes to cook. That's just because lentils tend to be smaller and beans are larger. So you'll also see that some of the beans have cracked a little bit or split, and that's totally fine. That just actually means that they're really nice and soft. And here's another tip for you. Beans don't taste that amazing unless you season them with salt. But if you season them with salt while they're boiling, um, it actually tends to make the skins really, really tough and kind of chewy and not so palatable. So what I like to do is once the beans are cooked, to give them sort of a salt water bath, um, I add about half a tablespoon per cup of beans and I salt the water afterwards and then I let the beans sit in the salty bath water for anywhere from 15 minutes onward. And actually the longer that the beans sit in this nice salted water, the more uh, salt they're going to absorb and the tastier they'll become. So at this stage, I can actually just put the lid back on, go about some other kitchen duties, and I can come back whenever I feel like it. All I have to do is taste the beans, see if they're according to how I'd like, and then they're ready to go. The last step in cooking beans is actually draining them. You'll typically have some water left over with lentils and beans, so we need to get rid of that. Careful, it's usually really, really hot. So Make sure there's a colander ready in your sink, and then you're just gonna pour. There we go. And at this stage, if you've added kombu, now's the time to discard it, because you don't really need to eat it. Um, it's also important to give the beans a really good rinse. You notice there's a lot of colored water coming off of them still. So I like to give it a rinse until it's totally clear. There we go. And there's the piece of kombu. You can actually see how much it's expanded. Um, and again, you can eat this if you want, but actually all the flavors left it and it's also absorbed all of those gas producing compounds. So we want to get rid of it. So we've drained the beans, given them a really good rinse, and now they're ready to use. Again, this is the exact same process with lentils, although lentils tend to be a little bit faster to cook. So there we are. You can also see how much they've expanded, and that's why buying 
beans or lentils dried and then cooking them yourself is a really economical way to do it. So what I like to do with the beans is add them to soups and stews or salads. Um, again, this would make a really nice black bean dip if that's what you're after. And beans and lentils will last stored in the fridge for four to five days. Just give them a good sniff. Your nose will tell you if they've turned or not. But what I really like to do is soak a large batch ahead of time, cook the whole lot, and then put them in the freezer. Even if I use half for a salad or hummus or something, the other half I can store and then they're ready to use whenever I need them. And surprisingly, once they're defrosted, they're actually delicious, not just in hummus, but also in salads or other soups and stews. And it's a really nice way to always have a really good source of protein, fiber, and folate on hand at all times. So that's how to cook legumes. I hope this has inspired you to do it yourself at home because I swear you'll be a convert. You'll never go back to buying canned again. You're gonna to save tons of money and your health will thank you for it. In the next video, I'm going to demonstrate raw vegetable preparation techniques.